Good evening, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'll be talking about toilets. Um, I have, uh, in my previous career, have managed pretty large construction projects, airport terminals and constructions, but I'm finding this project one of the most exciting. So I'm, I'm going to just take the liberty of sharing some of those ideas with you. <coughs> I'm sure most of you would know Mr. Gates. Uh, besides the, one of the richest person on earth at the moment, um, he's one of the very active philanthropists. Um, I didn't realize that the money that he's putting in the foundation is basically his personal money and it has nothing to do with the Microsoft cor cor Corporation. So the foundation is going on for some time, uh, and they have, I think they have a portfolio of $4 billion at the moment, including lots of vaccine preparation, uh, agriculture, uh, and one of the programs is water sanitation and health hygiene. There are two main components of that. One is basically supporting our conventional water and sanitation with the view to increase the access to safe water and safe sanitation. But they have also come up with another stream of program which try to really shake the whole sector by challenging the experts to come up with new ideas. I think there is a realization that many of these ideas may not work, but there is a reasonable chance that some of those could turn into either individually or in combination game changers in the sector. So that's, that happened on 14th of August this year when after our first phase um, we were asked to go and present our prototype uh, in Seattle in front of the panels and, and I was given in the end five to six minutes and I was constrained to do three slides in front of Mr. Gates and after that we were given the second prize uh, on our concept. Uh, we were beaten by Caltech, uh, but we sort of uh, were ahead of Stanford and some other universities. <laughs> so basically, if you look at this, these pictures, uh, what, what we have proposed is to convert just these. This is basically um, fecal sludge or yeah, basically shit, um, uh, which is very hazardous and harmful. And through the process, we are trying to convert that into valuable material safe to touch. And these are the real pictures. And I forgot to bring some samples because, uh, <laughs> because it, is, it, is, it smells like coffee. Uh, apologies to coffee lovers uh, or, or caramel. And, and they, 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 you can feel the granules of that. So basically, what we are trying to do is to, before I go on that, let me give the bigger picture. Um, 3.2 billion people at the moment don't have toilets. The people who have toilets, you don't really know where the excreta is going, whether it's treated or not. Even in Europe, there are cities where human excreta is more or less dumped straight into fresh waters, and there's a whole implication of that. So it is not just the developing countries issue. Uh, and if you think about health uh, cost and things, uh, diarrhea, uh, there's lost thousands, thousands of children are, are dying every minute um, uh, as we speak because of lack of toilets. So basically, we, we, we want to have toilet, which is basically desirable. So if you go to many countries, you don't want to use loo uh, because they are so dirty, they're smelly. And, and it's very hard to go in. So I think in our team, we have um, people from design school, from chemical engineering, from civil engineering, and from materials working together to create a desirable space in toilet so that you can also <coughs> treat your toilets respectfully. And why we are doing that, because I think studies have shown, World Bank, I think, that we have the least willingness to pay 
for our toilet or sanitation as compared to highest willingness to pay, let's say, for power and telecommunication. And that creates lots of problem for developing any business case for investment. Um, we think along with just treating the, um, uh, the normal fecal sludge, we will be exploring the whether menstrual hygiene waste could also be treated because that is one of the things which we don't talk about, but there are many countries where there's a huge loss of students when they reach to that stage because you don't have toilets to deal with that uh, menstrual hygiene waste. So we are thinking about whether some of the technologies we are going to, uh, to develop could also uh, treat uh, organic aspects of uh, that waste. Then we have a market, uh, you know, besides the developing countries, uh, even in uh, states and here, where you don't really have piped or network connections. Uh, you have big gatherings. I was told that this year, uh, Glastonbury um, Festival was uh, postponed. And one of the reasons was that they didn't have the toilets because all toilets were moved to Olympic. I don't know. Uh, you know but, but there are also big gatherings where you do need standalone mobile toilets and you don't have the real connection into the system. So what we want to do is, is, uh, is something which is desirable for users, self-cleaning. So we don't want to use quite a lot of water. Because at the moment, if you think about that, that um, you know, if, I, um, if I remember correctly, uh, the figure is like half, half a kilogram of excreta that we produce, an adult produced in many societies. And then we use for each flush, like five liter of water, and we use, we use all of that thing and we transport it miles and miles, and then we treat using lots of energy and lots of space. So apparently common sense tells you that maybe it's not that smart uh, to transport the whole thing and then you treat it in a very resource intensive way. So we want to, 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 uh, to make it smart. Uh, the challenge is to, to, to make it easy to maintain. So we are experimenting with some sort of nano coating, which basically will reduce the stickiness um, of material with that. Cultural acceptability, the world can be divided into people who sit and people who squat, people who wash and people who wipe. Um, and there are uh, associated uh, difficulties with what you design. Um, I've come across some people uh, you know, using a material and then trying to flush. Um, and in, in one case, I saw people using uh, you know, rocks uh, in, in some hilly area and trying to just flush it. And uh, um, we, we were given this uh, remit that it should be non-piped solution. And it has to have a least dependency on energy sources. So we, before I go on that, so what we did was basically, uh, the principle is very simple. Uh, there are some discussion about energy. There, there is a, a very good link between what we eat and what we excrete. So when you eat, you have some calorific value on food, uh, you know, 2,000 um, calories we eat. The thing is what comes out, it still has some energy. And the figures people show using different diets is from five to 20 megajoules per dry uh, mass. So the idea is that whether we can recover some of that energy from, from uh, uh, something that which we try to just uh, treat and not use. So that is one. The process that we are trying to use is called hydrothermal carbonization, which basically occurs naturally in converting um, uh, you know, material into um, you know, uh, like sludge into coal. But that happens over millions of years. So what we are trying to do is to achieve that in a very short period of time. And again, very simply, it, it is basically sort of pressure cooker, uh, where basically you try to get the heat up to 200 degrees centigrade under 20 bar pressure, which basically kills almost every, any sort of known germs and things. 
and convert the material. And what comes out of it, basically three streams of things, some uh, solid suspension, which we could extract and use for combustion, or we can use for soil, uh, uh, soil improver. Liquid stream, we could, we could extract uh, you know, some materials, nitrates uh, and gas, which we are thinking of you know, looping back into the system. So very simple uh, principle, um, you know, linkages between the energy we take in and what we can recover, natural process, and then trying to, to, to use that as much as possible to run on its own. This is not a toilet, uh, if you are visualizing where the toilet will go, but just a, a, a prototype to show our, our, our sort of uh, uh, concept. So if you think about, and if you want to visualize that you may have toilet somewhere there, and the waste is collected in this you know, collector, very simply, then we have a pump. Now, we are using pump at the moment, but that could be replaced by a solar powered or some sort of, this is like, you know, it uses, I think, 1.5, uh, you know, a um, lot less energy. So basically, the, the real thing which is happening is in this reactor, which again, you know, to show the process, we have used the off-the-shelf components. This is basically a heat exchanger. It has three tubes inside, so material goes and passes through in three loops, and by the time it reached there, it has attained the, the temperature. Uh, then, basically, material goes up, we sort of like reduce the pressure, and then the liquids and gas are collected. Basically, this prototype, you know, basically could, could be used by 100 users. Now, because our phase one, uh, which was basically to prove our concept, uh, 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 w was to, to do exactly that, because what, what is needed is ultimately to have household toilets which are using new principles. So that is the prototype which we took to Seattle. Um, it doesn't look like toilet, but it shows the principle. Now, what I'm going to do before I, we go to question and answer thing is to just to recap that in June, May, June 2011, uh, Gates Foundation um, invited 25 universities. They selected eight universities, including our university, to come up with ideas, and then they gave this this prize to three universities, Caltech, ourselves, and Toronto. Uh, different technologies are being proposed. And recently, we have got funding for the phase two. And the challenge now is to develop this concept into technology readiness level seven, which basically is lab-tested system operating in um, operational environment. And we all are very excited to work towards that. The, you know, we haven't finally resolve all the issues, but we think that we are on roads to some game-changing um, technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Sahel. Now, who would like to ask a question on reinventing the humble loo? Yeah. Challenge of that. Fellow panellists, no less. Hi, Gary Lee, University of Birmingham. Um, how do you deal with... Um, Changes in pH. I mean, say someone's sick in the toilet. Won't that won't that change the the bacteria flora? You see, our sort of the thing is at 140 degrees centigrade and above, we think all sorts of germs will be burned. So, in terms of dealing with pH and things, of course, and and of course the the whole the big issue is that if let's say all of a sudden you have a party in a house and there's lots of beer, and then all of a sudden your, your, your proportion of solid uh, you know, becomes like less than 8%. Because the, the idea is that you need to have certain amount of solids to produce the energy. So if your proportion become less than 8%, uh, almost liquid, then what do you do with that? Uh, these are the kinds of questions that we, we are sort of considering. Uh, but there are some large plants already up operating HTC, uh, dealing with solid waste, uh, particularly in Germany and uh, Switzerland, uh, where they are using 25 to 30 percent of, of, of proportion. But I think these are the kinds of things uh, we'll be looking at. Uh, and especially the big challenge is how we can reduce the scale 
because we, we need a household toilet. But then in household, we may not have the energy, uh, you know, the, the, the mass to generate the energy. So we may have to compromise a bit, and we may think about, like, rather than having just, uh, you know, 20 users, we say, look, the minimum would be from 30 to 100 or, or above. Yes, thank you to Gary for raising the Saturday night clubbing objection to that one. Uh, has anyone else got a question? I think you've wowed them all into silence with, with the reinvention. I mean, I, I just have a, 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 a practical one which may have crossed people's minds, which is simply cost. I mean, you've alluded to it there that you might have to sort of upscale to start with. I mean, even simpler new loo technologies. I got carried away with a Clarkwell architect recently and, and almost agreed to having something where you washed your hands and then you used the wastewater for, for the toilet, which then turned out to cost £2,500. It's just... So, I mean, have you thought about how quickly you could get cost yeah. to a level yeah. that the was target, scalable? The target that's set is like 0 0.05 or 5 cents per user per day. Is the is is the target that we are aiming like sixty dollars yes. per family per month? But my point is, if it's already so expensive, even to do something which sounds a bit simpler, which is to use waste water, then it, the thing what's is, what's the time scale? What maybe you're not adding in that is not just that cost, but maybe twenty thousand pounds per family that we yeah. sort of incur in the UK uh, for the pipes and everything. That's not really counted. Mm. Uh, so the thing is that our existing system is really very expensive. Uh, so I think, um, uh, well, I think you have a point, and it all depends on the standards as well. So I think our design team, along with the other grantees, will be looking into, because I think we do want to have, like, market segmentation. So we, we, we can think of, like, people who can spend lots of uh, money on that, mm -hmm. and also people who are poorest of the poor in, in, in developing countries to afford. But that's the target that we are aiming to. Fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you for having